Welcome to the BioFarm International Podcast, Bioprocess for Beginners, from shaker to bioreactor. This podcast is brought to you by Bioprocess Center of the Eppendorf AG, your expert partner for fermenter, bioreactors, service, and consumables for bioprocessing. To find out more, please go to eppendorf.com slash bioprocess. And now, here's your host for this podcast, the contributing editor for BioPharm International, Cindy Dubin. Hello, everyone. This is Cindy Dubin, contributing editor for BioPharm International. And I'm here with David Solach, Scientific Communications Manager at Eppendorf AG Bioprocess Center. Thank you for being here today, David. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, David, to get started, why should I switch from a shaker to a bioreactor? Well, this is actually a question we are frequently asked, especially from scientists who work with flasks and plates and are afraid of switching to a steel tank bioreactor. Shake flasks, for sure, are an easy-to-use and inexpensive choice for basic applications and do not need advanced equipment or sensing and control technologies. However, this very simplicity is the biggest disadvantage at the same time. It already starts with the difference between shaking and steering. The agitation mode, the direction, and the speed influences fluid dynamics, which has a direct impact on parameters like heat transfer and homogeneity of the culture. In a bioreactor, you get detailed insights into culture performance and the opportunity to monitor and control the process parameters at any given time point meaning that you can adjust critical parameters such as temperature, dissolved oxygen, or pH on demand, or even program an automated process. So there are definitely many advantages compared to shake flasks. Where do you see the biggest potential in using bioreactors? For me personally, I see the biggest advantage in the possibility of automation. Constant monitoring of a process and automated adaptions controlled by a really intelligent software just strongly decreases the risk of failures, which naturally occur when multiple manual steps are involved. Just think of the risk of a contamination, especially when you're working in larger volumes like hundreds of liters. Sensor media is really quite expensive and you don't want to lose it just because of contamination. Especially for stem cell customers, I see another big advantage in the availability of single-use vessels. Our BioBlue single-use vessels, for example, are pre-sterilized and therefore strongly reduce the risk of cross-contamination, which might occur with classical glass vessels due to the wrong sterilization process, for example. Another advantage of single-use vessels is also their lighter weight compared to glass vessels, which make them uh, way more easy to handle. So, David, I just imagine a lab with a huge 400-liter shaker Scaling up with a bioreactor sounds easy. Do I just need a bigger vessel, or are there aspects I need to consider? Actually, there are quite a lot of things you have to consider, but uh, one of the most important parameters is definitely oxygen. The availability of oxygen in a bioreactor is key to a successful bioprocess. For microbial fermentation, it's fairly easy to ensure proper oxygen supply since bacterial cells are way more robust compared to stem cells. A Russian-type impeller with quite high agitation speed can be used to ensure a good oxygen transfer to the medium. In contrast, stem cells are very sensitive to shear stress and have to be treated carefully. Therefore, an impeller with pitched blades and slow agitation speed is typically used to ensure gentle mixing of the culture. In bioprocessing, the oxygen transfer rate, or in short OTR, is used to describe the oxygen transfer from a gaseous phase to the culture medium. The OTR is considered as key engineering process parameter to culture scale-up and is influenced by many different factors. For example, the bioreactor dimension, agitation speed, gas flow rate, and concentration, and also by the design of the impeller. Most scale-up strategies aim for keeping one or more parameters constant across scales. For example, it is important to adjust the steering speed in order to maintain a similar tip speed. For proper cell culture scale-up, it is important to select equipment of different sizes with similar KLA capabilities that offer enough overlapping so that the small-scale success can be replicated in larger volumes. Steer tank bioreactors provide the design that is comparably easy to describe with classical engineering approaches like, uh, for example, the vessel geometry, impeller diameter, vessel diameter, the liquid height, 
and ratios thereof. It is the design for which most research on scale-up phenomena has been conducted, and of course, this knowledge was also transferred to our single-use vessels. David, you mentioned different impeller types that are typically used for microbiology or cell culture. Are there innovative impeller adaptions, for example, in the field of stem cell cultures? We see an increasing tendency in the field to move from shake flask to steer tank bioreactors, especially with the focus on scaling up, standardization, and reproducibility. In classical microbiology, the Russian type impeller with very high agitation speed is used, while for stem cell applications, a pitch blade impeller with rather slow agitation is preferred in order to ensure equal mixing and low shear stress for the cells. This is one aspect stem cell scientists who start working with a bioreactor are still afraid of. Especially for the stem cell culture, you need to find the right agitation speed that does not harm your cell, but at the same time ensure a good oxygen supply and prevents the cell from settling. A pitch blade impeller does a really good job here in terms of mixing efficiency and also low shear stress at the same time. However, a common problem is that cells settle when the steering speed is too slow. To overcome this challenge, we have developed a new impeller with eight blades together with Professor Zweigert from the medical school in Hannover that is especially designed to keep cells in solution even at low steering speeds. The eight pitched blades ensure gentle mixing and reduce the cell settling compared to pitched blade impellers at the same agitation speed. You also mentioned the advantage of automation in bioprocessing. Do you have an example of this? Yes, we have a very nice example, also from Professor Zweigert's group, who did compare the cell growth in the steer tank bioreactor following different feeding strategies. This group has achieved an increase in cell growth and a higher yield with the same amount of media, just by changing from repeated manual fat batch feeding to automated continuous feeding using perfusion. Additionally, to the higher yield, the manual workload for the perfusion run was also less compared to the manual fat batch run. In the perfusion setup, feeding and harvesting was automatically controlled, while in the fat batch run, the medium was manually exchanged every day. This did not only increase the workload, it also increased the risk of contamination, which you do not want to have when you work with stem cell cultures. Very interesting. Thank you for that informative overview, David. We truly appreciate you being here today. Thanks for having me here. It was really a pleasure. This has been Cindy Dubin, Contributing Editor for Biofarm International. Thanks to all for listening. You've been listening to Biofarm International Podcast, Bioprocess for Beginners, from Shaker to Bioreactor. This podcast is brought to you by Bioprocess Center of the Eppendorf AG, your expert partner for fermenter, bioreactors, service, and consumables for bioprocessing. To find out more, please go to eppendorf.com slash bioprocess.